welcome back to Bear Grounds Homestead. My name is Don. Uh, one thing that will make your wife happy if you've been hauling rainwater and buckets and watering with a watering can in your garden is to make a rain catchment and actually have a hose to water with. I mean, she, we had, I think my father-in-law left these here. He bought them then never came and got them. I had the lumber left over from building a fence and build a stand for it. And my neighbors had new had a new porch put on their house back up on the hill and they had like forty foot of gutter just laying there in their backyard and I said, Y'all gonna do anything with that? And they said, Yeah, we're gonna throw it away. I said, Well how about I just take it? So I had the gutter. Only thing I had to buy was a downspout for it and about about ten dollars worth of PVC in fittings and a flex fitting to have something to hook a hose up. And luckily, this is a little bit higher elevation, so it actually the water's running downhill, so you actually have a little bit of pressure. <laughs> but Mama's behind you. Oh, Mama. <laughs> but it's in a good spot. The thing is, we've gone for about we've gone for about almost two weeks with like no rain and we just about used up all the water in there but in the past three days we've gotten four inches of rain so this thing is full I mean it's full right up to the top and running over so it'll last us a pretty good and we're supposed to get rain I guess off and on for the next couple of weeks so at least it'll stay full we'll have you know on the days that it doesn't rain we'll be able to water because it was dry 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 but yeah, I mean, I'm going to probably put up another one of these back on, um, we have another shed back there that Carmen wants to turn into a canning kitchen. And that way I can catch rainwater for her to use. So she'll have running water inside there to the sink and stuff. But I'll have to put a filtration system on it of some kind. Even though, you know, it's rainwater, but still, you know, you're catching it where it's running off a roof and all kinds of good stuff in it. Fine for water in the garden. And if you got some kind of filtration system on it, it's, you can get it to where you can drink it. So, but the one good thing that's handy to have on the homestead is all these that you can make and get it where you can get a piece of gutter on a building and catch that water. You know, that's always better to water your garden when stuff's not loaded full of chemicals. We have, they ran city water out here and the place is hooked to it, but we don't put it on our food, you know. All our stuff in the garden it's just you know when you when you open the tap it smells like chlorine we had made a rain catch on the back of the carport but we were only catching it in like garbage cans and we just you know bucket that out put it in the wagon go over there and fill up the, the watering can and uh, we watered like that for years and but it was you know that was like almost an everyday thing because if we did get a rain, we have raised beds and they dry out pretty quick. But she's a lot happier to be able to stand there and hold a hose and water everything. So it's a lot less, lot less work for me. Especially because we expanded the garden. Yeah. All the water that comes off of that roof goes into this gutter. And then into the downspout and into the 250 gallon holding tank. One good rain lasting maybe you know 30 minutes depending on how heavy it is we'll we'll fill up that water tank the ladder is there because don actually had to reattach the gutter where we had the ice and everything that came during the hard freeze had uh during the hard freeze at the end of april or in may when the gutter had filled full of ice it actually had broken off of the house a little bit so that is why Don had to reconnect it and he's got it he's got it back up so it's holding now so the water can fill that up hi everybody it's dark here at Bear Grounds Homestead and I wanted to talk with you about tomato hornworms um, this right here is a jar 
with three very large worms in there. Um, we went out a little bit ago and picked them, but I want to give you my secret as to how I how I find them, an easier way to find them. I learned this about two, three years ago, and ever since then, this is what we've been using to catch these little boogers. Let me see if I can show. There's one right there, Oop, right there. There's another one here down at the bottom. So I want to show you guys right there. I want to show you guys treat a, a quick trick to figure out how to find these. I like Amazon, 15 bucks, 10 bucks, something like that. There is this black light. And I'm going to shut the lights off. See if we could put y'all in the dark for a second. See if we can get this to show what happens when you hit them with black light. Okay, let's try this again. So, I don't know if the camera's picking it up or not. I'm trying to find a way to do it. Oh, uh, maybe. I'm working on it, y'all. <laughs> I gotta get Mr. Bear to hold it because it freaks me out a little bit. <laughs> There's one right there at the top. He's on a, he should be on a branch. Okay. Well, here, hold on. I'm trying to do it. Anyways, though, it makes them glow. They glow. Let me doing it back here. Maybe that'll show it better. Put your hand up some. <laughs> oh. Well, they glow really bright compared to the foliage that is like a mute green. No, put them back in the jar. You're not allowed to eat them. It's so gnarly. Well, there's three horned worms in there. Giant ones. Decimated. Absolutely decimated the top of the tomato plants. That's okay. We have them. Mr. Bear actually pulled a fourth one off earlier today. And we'll just have to be vigilant to keep making sure that we're pulling and checking the tomato plants. Uh, we've had a lot of rain in the, in the evenings and that doesn't help. Um, however, these will probably be either relocated tomorrow to pollinate because they're great pollinators or the chickens will find them and eat them. Usually that's what, usually that's what we do. The chickens will eat them. So anyways though, sorry for the dark and the uh, interesting display there. I'm trying to see if I can, I guess it, Shouldn't put it towards you, huh? That's kind of catching it. It glows in the back black light. You can see the contrast between the worm and the foliage. So. Anyways, though, that's what they look like, and they stand out a lot um, compared to everything else. Helps if you can see my face. Do some creepy stuff. <laughs> that's really creepy. Anyways, though, it helps to it helps them stand out to e pick them off easy to find them, so you don't have half of your tomatoes eaten. Unfortunately. One of my Brad's Tomic Cherry Tomatoes, or Grape Tomatoes, um, took some hard hits on the tomatoes, but that's okay. It is what it is. We, pl we plant more than what we're going to need because we know that birds and bugs and everything else is going to get them. So, anyways, though, I wanted to pass that along to you. Well, hope you liked the video. <laughs> says like and share and subscribe. And for those of you that have subscribed, thanks. So we'll see you next time.
What are you doing back there? Have you decided Daddy's truck is where you need to lay all your eggs? Well, we're going to have to try and break this habit. Yeah, she's breaking. I'll let her go for now. I mean, she spent the night in there last night. 